Neil, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you, man. How are you going today? Good. How's it going? I like your, yeah, your very uh, well. shelf of films. That's cool. The physical media collection. We've got we to keep it up, so I appreciate that. I'm, I'm going to jump right into this because I'm really interested in, in knowing, obviously we always hear about actors who are learning to drive to get to know their characters better. But I want to know what it's like from a director's point of view of when you jump into those cars for the first time, what's that experience like, but what are you focusing on getting right on screen through that experience? Well, I, I actually sort of have an obsession with cars. So, you know, I never, I never thought that my interest in cars would ever really cross over with filmmaking. Um, it just, it made sense when I read the screenplay that I was like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense given that I absolutely love cars. So I didn't, I didn't actually need to get into the cars and drive them around. I mean, I've done that so much that I, I, I knew what the experience was. It was more like, how would I try to capture that? Like where, you know, where would I put the cameras? Like what, what am I going for? So to me, it was less about driving and more about, I know the driving part now, how do we photograph it? Um, and then the other thing is, uh, that my knowledge of, of like racing is actually kind of a bit limited. I'm, I'm much more into cars than I am into racing. So I had to learn the sort of the mechanics of racing to some degree and understand that a little bit more than I did when I started the movie. I, th I think that's interesting as well in the sense of, like you are saying, coming into this world specifically of cars, because what I was intrigued by is that all your feature films up to this point have been original scripts or based on, you know, that you have written yeah. as well. So what was it like coming into a world with not just the pre-existing element of, of Jan's real life story, but the video game itself and bringing that to life and screen, what was that experience like for you? Well, I, I mean, the process was that I, I, I had actually written a much darker dystopian science fiction uh, script that I sold Sony and I, I had sold it to them and, and um, they wanted to make it, but they, because it was fairly high budget, they, they wanted to have a, a very specific actor that we were waiting to hear back on. And it was just taking months and like it was, it was I was, I was going to start looking at doing something else while I was waiting for, I know, I know that I will make that film, but it was just a timing thing. Mm. So they were like, hey, before you go off and do something else, do you want to look at Gran Turismo? And which made no sense to me because I was like, what, how would you make a film out of a racing simulator? And then when I read the screenplay, it had these elements in it that I just instantly was drawn to. Like, obviously there's the car element, but, but more than that was, was A, this approach to a video, video game film that I just, at the time I hadn't seen before, where the video game is inside the world of the film the way that it's inside the world that we live today. You know, it's not, we're not in the narrative Sorry. of the game. And then, and also that it's, a, it's, it's biographical. And I didn't, I didn't know about Jan Martinborough. I didn't know about GT Academy. I didn't know any of that stuff. So, um, so I was sort of very intrigued by it. And then as, as I thought about it more, uh, I started realizing that it reminded me of films like, like Rocky or the, the Karate Kid that when I was, you know, like an early teenager had like a big effect on me. In, in, a, in a, not in a way that made me want to be a filmmaker, but like in an aspirational way that you, it, it, they just have a positive, uh, the, this kind of classic old school Hollywood positive uh, inspiring idea behind them. And it, there was no universe in which I was ever going to have directed a movie like that in my mind. Like it just wasn't on my radar, you know? And I was like, oh, I actually do want to contribute to that genre. Like I, I'm, I would like to have done a movie that feels more positive than the other films that I've done. So that's kind of, that's basically what happened. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just went down the road of, of thinking about production design that was not about world building, but about like the real world that we live in. And yeah. yeah, going from there. I just want to say for my last minute, uh, you're, an, you're a filmmaker who heavily influenced my love of film growing up as a teenager. And I mean, you were talking about the shelf behind me, but like, that's genuinely like one of my favorite films ever made. And I really, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat today because um, I don't think I'd be reviewing movies and then doing what I do now if it wasn't for discovering cool. this and, and going to see things like Elysium at the cinema. So yeah. I appreciate the time. I had so much fun with this film and, and those racing scenes, man, in this movie are uh, unreal. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Dude, your shirt also is like camo for that wall. You know that, right? Like it's, it's basically like... <laughs> 
It's like a predator style, <laughs> like stealth camo shirt for a video wall. It's how I catch people off guard. It's you, you right. don't know where I'm coming from at any point. Colors are sourced <laughs> by, yeah, it's awesome.